One of the objectives of a Quake W analysis often is to make an evaluation of the ground response due to the in input of the earthquake record. One of the better ways of looking at the dynamic response is to compare values at history points. If you recall, we defined two history points, one at the crest and one at the base, and by looking at the acceleration records at these two points, it is a convenient way of getting an appreciation of the ground response. Recall that the acceleration at the base history point is a replica. It's a replica of the input acceleration time history. The history point at the crest gives the base acceleration plus the finite element computed relative accelerations. So in this particular case here, we see that the blue is the base and the dark red is the crest. And this shows some high amplification at the crest. The input peak is 0.2 G. The crest peak is about 0.45 G. Let's go to GeoStudio and repeat those graphs and make those graphs to show you how it is done. Now that we have completed the quake analysis, we go to the results view and we can say draw a graph and select the graph X acceleration versus time. So we are plotting here history point data and we are plotting accelerations and we are plotting the X acceleration versus time. The set location, we have selected a geometry item which is the history point at the crest. So that is the acceleration at the crest. A second graph here, x acceleration versus time at the base. Everything else is the same except the location here now is at the base. Making this graph as large as possible, we can now hold down the control key and select the first two graphs together and we can see here that the blue, as I've already noted, is the acceleration from the input time history record and the reddish values are the accelerations at the crest of the structure. And of course in this particular case here, I'm going to turn off under options the legends for the for a moment so we get a better picture of the uh, graph itself. And so we can compare at every particular point the input motion with the response at the crest. So like I've said, this is one of the better ways of uh, looking at ground response is comparing a particular point like the crest with the actual input of the time history record. There are many other ways to uh, create graphs of the response. Uh, one that is frequently created is a profiles of peak values. And so if we were to have a profile at the dam center line, we could, for example, plot the peak, the peak accelerations along a profile from crest down to the base of the problem or we might want to uh, plot the dyna peak dynamic deviatoric stress in, along a profile. I won't take a great deal of time here to plot these graphs. They are readily made by you for whatever reason at a particular location in the profile. The point here is that you can make 
many different graphs of the ground response, except to note that when we are plotting peaks, peaks occur at different times in the profile. So these peak values here may all have occurred at different times during the shaking. So that this, this one may have occurred at two seconds, this one may have occurred at three seconds, and so forth. So that's a very important thing to observe when you are looking at peak values, that these peak values do not all occur at the same time. Now some commentary on the ground response analysis. We have uh, compared Quake W with ProShake. ProShake is a one-dimensional ground response analysis uh, formulated in the frequency domain and we have compared this independent commercial program with a three different, using three different earthquakes and we, these uh, comparative results are presented in a detailed example that we ship with the software. But generally the observation is that Quake W gives good agreement with the independently produced commercial product called ProShake. ProShake, by the way, is a product that has been developed and is being marketed by Dr. Stephen Kramer. Some other observations worth noting are that the response, the response of the earth structure depends on the soil stiffness. And for this reason, we should avoid a linear elastic stress strain relationships when we are doing a ground response analysis. Generally, using linear elastic properties results in unrealistic amplifications. So as a minimum, when you are looking at ground response, we should use an equivalent linear approach and not use a linear elastic approach. The linear elastic option in Quake W is primarily there for instructional purposes and comparative purposes, but it really doesn't have any application to field problems. So as a minimum, you should do an equivalent linear analysis, as I've already said, when you are looking at a ground response type of information. Another very important point about the response analysis is that the deformations from the quake analysis have no physical meaning, particularly deformations at the end of the shaking. Let me say it another way. We cannot get any useful information on permanent deformations from a Quake W analysis alone. The primary purpose, once again, to repeat what I've said previously, is that we do a Quake W analysis to get a measure of the dynamic shear stresses, and we use the dynamic shear stresses to get a measure of the development of excess pore pressures and we do a Quake W analysis to get some idea of the ground response. But Quake W has not been intended, let me repeat, has not been intended to give a measure of permanent deformations. The computed deformations in Quake W provide a sense of the motion, but the actual magnitude at the end of the motion, whatever the residual effect is in the files, is of no physical meaning and isn't intended to be of physical meaning. We take a, we do the uh, post-earthquake deformation analysis later in order to get some appreciation of permanent deformations. But sorry to belabor the point, but repeating one more time, the the deformations at the end of the dynamic analysis are not meaningful. We can, however, get a sense of the motion of the structure 
and this is somewhat instructive in some ways. So let us go to GeoStudio and look at the motion and we will demonstrate how to make a movie which is sometimes good for communication purposes with clients and th to those who you are making a presentation to on the dynamic analysis. So when we are in the results view of the Quake W analysis, notice that we have here a time box and we can look at the results for every time that the results have been saved. So in this particular case we are now looking at the initial static conditions and then when we select at two one hundredth two tenths of a second we save the results every ten, tenth step two tenths of a second this would be the displacement. If we use the down arrow key or the roller on your mouse you can see that the deformation changes as we step through the earthquake record. So this is one way to look at the motion that occurs and you can often roll through here and look at the results at a particular time step. Another way to do this is to make a movie. We can say view a movie. We select all the times and then create a movie of the entire drawing. And uh, let's call this the example motion and we can save the movie. I had already done this, now I'm replacing it just to repeat the process. So this is a somewhat useful way sometimes to just get a physical feel for the motion that the structure undergoes during the earthquake shaking. One point to note here is that in this particular illustration here we are only looking at the relative motion not the absolute motion. Notice that all of the motion is relative to the fixed base. Well there are many different movies that could be created like this. This is just one way of illustrating what can be done with Quake W. I am going to leave it at that as far as interpretation of the ground response from the dynamic analysis. We'll move on to the next subject and leave the response analysis at this point.